Welcome guys, my name is Michael. I'm here for the Atlanta Film Production Group's uh, interview series where we're talking with uh, creatives from all over the film industry here in Atlanta. Today we have a very special guest. His name is Jason Warner Smith, actor extraordinaire. Michael, thank you. It's a wonderful introduction. Thanks for having me. So I was actually really, really excited about this interview. Yeah. We we probably we have actually some slight history that you don't even know about. Oh yeah. Yeah. So do you remember doing a film called Rednecks? Yeah. Yeah. So I was the editor that got fired off of that project. <laughs> <laughs> I was the first editor that got fired off. Which is a whole another long story, but yeah, it's uh, so I actually have been able to edit and work on something that you you've worked on in the past, and then um, you did No Ringo. Oh yeah, which Ashley was actually the location coordinator. That's right. on that project. That's right. Yeah. How 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 did you like that experience with with uh, the the forty eight hours? Because that was the world competition, right? The forty eight right. world. Yeah, I'm not exactly you know, honestly. Bryce was the 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 leader on that whole thing, mm -hmm. and I'm not. A, I'm not 100% sure about that was my first 48 hour film and so as far as like the different designations maybe somebody else could tell you about that but he had, I think he had won, a, won something earlier which allowed him to then compete at, okay, compete mm -hmm. at the world level and um, he actually just posted something on Facebook somewhere and I was like hmm, sounds like fun count me in really so you're yeah. that accessible well, yeah, yeah, especially, you know, especially, you know, uh, it's funny. I had a really good run there, you know, 2015, 16, 17, 18. I was a busy man. And, right. But, you know, this business is very fickle, and unless you're creating your own work, uh, you're dependent upon, you know, the whims of others. And it was right. a slow period, and so I, I like to act. And, um, you know, auditioning is part of the job, but it doesn't give you the same thrill as doing the right. job. The fact you guys won, right? So you guys won, and it was selected to go to Cannes, and then COVID hit. Right. So there was no. I know this COVID thing has destroyed so many wonderful things that were supposed to happen this year. I had two other shorts that were in festivals, and of course, you know, they're online. So, you know, who's watching really? You know, and yeah. It's, it's, the whole idea, if you've ever been to a film festival, is to go to the festival, right? And you right. hang out, and you meet people, and you network, and you. Which is pretty much the basis of the festival. Is yeah, the that's the idea. You know, and then, then we watch some movies while we're there too. You right, know, it's right, like right, you know, right. it's secondary, right? It, it is. And it's I mean, secondary. it's a it's a good part of it. And you know, of course, if you have a, a, a an entry in the festival, you want to do well. Right. But yeah, I mean, it's the whole camaraderie of it, and it's just. The, the pandemic's just destroyed that. Yeah. And so, you're an Atlanta native. Yeah. And um, you started acting around the age of nine in theater. That's correct. So what, I don't did want to... Did your research. A little bit. Just yeah. a little bit. Yeah. So did, were you an actor that had to leave Atlanta to find success in an a acting career and then come back? Or were you able to navigate through that here because um, a lot of times that's what happens people go to LA or they go to New York right 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 well I'll try to keep this short because I don't I know <laughs> I, I got listen for an you. hour but I yeah I mean I did theater as a kid and then got into it as a you know high school college and that sort of thing and I just love theater I love I love the rehearsal I love the people I like mm -hmm. performing and the, you know you have the audience right there and that's fun and film and TV just was kind of a uh, hobby here in Atlanta up until 2008 when things changed when they brought in the the tax incentives and right. brought all the, the work here and so around that time um, I had an agent and I, there every now and then a film or TV would come to town but I wasn't really active now back up I moved to Los Angeles in 1991 and lived there for three years and the accomplishment of that three years of being trying to be an actor in, in Hollywood was that I parked a lot of cars mm -hmm. and uh, oh, did you wait tables too. No, I no, just parked, you were, oh, I, so I you strictly just, parked cars. Gotcha. I hung draperies and blinds for a company for a while, and um, uh, after three years of banging around, making the best friends I'd ever made in my life, who I'm still to this day to this day. Awesome. Yeah, because we were all a bunch of misfits, and you know we had no money and just hung out together. I and, love that term. Yeah, I mean we we stayed home, drank beer, and played Monopoly. We we, we couldn't afford to go anywhere. <laughs> that was it. That, that was, was the highlight. That was, of that the, was week. the highlight. And uh, so, but I moved back in '94. I worked at a dinner theater in Atlanta for three or four years, and then. You know, I actually had started a side business that turned into a full-time business, which was totally unrelated to acting. And then 2008, my agent, Kathy Hardegree at AMT, she's retired now, called me and said, Jason, are you still doing this or what? I'm like, I don't know. 
You must have left a, some type of impression on her. Well, I mean, you know, there's just, the gap, and she thinks of you for something. Well, there was all this business coming to town. She right, goes, you ought to get, know. you know, serious about this because there's a lot of work coming now. I'm like, okay. She goes, well, your headshots are black and white, and they're ten years old. You need to get some pictures. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So we did all that, and so then, you know, the business picked up. I started getting more and more auditions, and I booked some small roles in TV, and. Finally booked a nice role in this the remake of Footloose in 2011, which was the first time I'd been on a set for more than one day in a row, and that was kind of cool. And it's like, okay, maybe I can make a living at this eventually. And it went back down again. And then about 2015, 16, 17, things picked up, and I started booking some serious work. And now I am full-time only an actor and an acting teacher. The side job is gone. And that's all I do, and I'm very happy. So long story there. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's, no, but that's the journey. Yeah. That's so. I think those long or short, those are the stories that are important. Those are the stories that like our audience wants to know about because everybody has either people are currently in that space of mm -hmm. things trying to happen and trying to make them work, and you know sometimes you know it's like a lot of it is for some people think it's relationships or it's. You know, I like to say it's just the due diligence of constantly trying yeah. to become whatever it is you're trying to become. And, you know, that's the interesting piece about this world. And you used the term earlier, misfits. And mm -hmm. I always I always say, like, I call the film set and filmmaking the, the greatest sport in the world because it's the only time you'll have, like, this band of misfit toys that come together for sure. one goal. like the endurance and the stamina of creating a film is far greater than any actual physical sport, I think. And I think oh, it's... Especially on the crew side, yeah. Yeah, yeah, especially on the crew Full side. Full respect, you know. So, and I know you have, so, like, because you say 2011, I was like, I'm going to write down all these different projects <laughs> that, you, like, you've been on a number of television shows mm -hmm. um, from, I think it was, like, Rectify, you've done some stuff on... House of Pain, you did, and obviously the biggest thing, The Walking Dead, right? Sure, yeah. What was that? So I was a super avid fan, and like you kind of came into it like when the show was pinnacle, like it was like the greatest. It was on the way down, you can say it, yeah. <laughs> no, no, I'm not. Well, we could talk about that part yeah, too. Jason but, showed up and it just went down. <laughs> yeah, it was like, what happened? Yeah. But, the sh but at the time, uh, with, with the whole, the Negan piece, it was literally when they were hitting like their greatest viewership. Sure. So is there a pressure for you going into something this pre-built, or this machine that's already moving, and mm -hmm. then it's like, are there nerves that kick into that? Well, of course. I mean, I think... You'd be hard pressed to find an actor that you you know put on a lie detector test that said their first day on set of any job they weren't a little bit jittery, right. you know, because you, you you don't know everyone, you know, and everybody else knows everyone because they've been there. What was nice about my first day on The Walking Dead was there was a large group of us who it was our first day, because it was myself and Josh Michael on the Savior side. It was our first day. And then all those guys on the Kingdom side, it was not really their first day, but it was their first week. And we're talking about, you know, Kari Payton and Cooper Andrews and Gary yeah. Cahill and uh, Carlos and everybody that was on the Kingdom side, you know, they had just started as well. Mm -hmm. So they didn't know the crew that well either. You know, the only person on our bunch was uh, Lenny James, who plays, um, what the hell's this character's name? The Stick. Oh, uh... Morgan. Morgan, yeah, he plays Morgan. Yeah, I forgot, I just know his name name, but yeah, so he was like the veteran. But, you know, I didn't have a whole lot of lines, and it was, a, so once we kind of found our groove, it was, it was easy, because they're, they are a well, well-oiled machine. I think it has to be, right? Yeah, I mean, well, the surprising, and this is a funny, quick funny aside, is that I didn't realize, A, I didn't realize they shot on film. So they shoot, really? the whole thing shot on 16 millimeter film. Wow. wow. And I was just like, holy crap, they're putting film in the cameras, and they're running three, four, five cameras every take. Yeah. And well, so, there's a lot of, especially for the action stuff. Well, it just speeds things up. Yeah. And um, so I remember I had this bit where I was supposed to walk around this truck and look in the back of the truck to see what the supplies were, and I hadn't made an inventory of cameras. I just saw, oh, there's the camera. I walked around, looked, I looked straight down the barrel of a camera in the back. It's like, oh, there's another camera here. Okay, surprise. So I was like, oh, let's do that take again. I just, you know, it's like, oh, where else are you hiding these things? You know, where are the rest of the cameras? Is, was, what is the, can you kind of explain like the, because it just seems very intensive. It's predominantly all outdoors. It's hot Georgia weather. Mm -hmm. uh, 
So I'm just like, it's probably very grueling days of, of shooting. Like, how many pages are you guys usually, or were you guys shooting in a day typically? Well, I mean, for my stuff, it was not, I mean, yeah, we were always outdoors. I mean, well, the first se season seven, my first season, every scene was in the same place that damn parking lot. Um, <laughs> yeah, and it's you know, asphalt in August. It's like, oh, you know, they, they would put those big, huge cranes with the screens up, but still it was blazing it, hot. But you know, I mean, right. no, nobody is going to listen to some actor who's getting paid a grand a day whine about how hot it is to be on the hottest TV show in the world. Right, right, no right, one's, right. No one's complaining, okay? Right. So if they were, it's like, you don't belong here. Um, I don't know, where are we going with that? But, oh, grueling. Yeah, we would shoot, I mean, we were shooting two, two pages a day, really, because, I mean, it was very intricate, and what was interesting, that I, I loved what they would do, there was one point where they said, all right, you two over here, now, when we yell action, pull up, remember the beginning of the scene, when you first got here, just, you're doing the beginning of the scene, but these guys are doing the end of the scene over here, because we've got this camera, and the light's already set up, and for you Not guys, confusing at all. No, right? it's like, so they're doing, like, the first half of the scene, and we're finishing the scene over here on action. So they they're smart and yeah. and it was I never felt as though we were wasting time. Well, and that's good because I yeah. know there's a lot of sets where there's a lot of time. No, it. when it was like, all right, you know, uh, bring in uh, second team. We're like, we won't be over here long, you know. And, and they we go sit over and you know, drink some water and hang out and boom. All right, first team, let's go. You know, they they moved fast and it's a huge crew and it seemed like everybody was getting along just great. What was the audition process like? for that well for me personally it, it was a six-year odyssey <laughs> yeah i mean i auditioned every season except season one i, I don't think oh I, so you were from the very beginning yeah i was it. auditioning beginning season two and you know it was like one a year maybe two a year and i would you know be able to discern like oh there's the role that i didn't get and I was very happy that I didn't get the parts that I read for because they were like dead in five minutes, you know. So I was like, all right, it's got to work out. It was a it was a gift in disguise. Yeah, and so toward the you know, it, I'm still a human though. My, I still got an ego and I still got feelings, and you know, and my wife will attest to this. Is like there was plenty of whining about God. Why am I gonna do? Why are they not hiring me? And I mean, you know, I would, and I eventually that would spill over into my agent. Like, what the hell? You know, you, you, I know they keep calling me in. I know they like me, but what what am I doing wrong? He's like, look, it's not. And I know better. I know yeah. better, but still, you know. The, it's the thought. It's yeah, the and I and I know better because it's not that. Because when you don't get it, no one's telling if you why not, you didn't get it or hey. No, we, and they we, don't have time for that yeah. crap, you know. And what was nice, though, is Lisa May Fan Cannon, who was the Atlanta half of the casting team, the other half of, uh, uh, oh, now this is embarrassing, um, the L.A. casting team, those mm -hmm. guys, Sherry and them, um, they, um, they worked together, and Lisa May would call Alex and just say, just tell Jason... We they really like him. They're just trying to find the right peg hole to put him in. So do, how do you feel about how it ended up falling? Oh, it couldn't be better. I mean, it could not have been better. I mean, I even the I don't know how well you know the show. There was a character in the kingdom, a guy named a uh, character named Richard, played by Carl McKeenan, and it was a five. It was billed as a five episode guest star arc. So he knew he was not gonna go more than five episodes. And mm. I also got to read for that role. Mm. And I was like, ah, the guest star, yeah, this would be great. I didn't get it. Uh, Carl got it. Carl did a fantastic job. Mm -hmm. But he was dead in five episodes, guaranteed. But no part, other way around. But the part I read for went on for two years. So yeah. it was a better deal. And so I was very, very happy. You know, I, Thank Scott Gimple every time I had a chance. So. Yeah, yeah, no, and I think too that that's also part of it. Like, because there's always the the thing with that with that show, and it's similar to Game of Thrones, like the audience never really knew who was safe watching oh, yeah. it. So it was yeah. kind of like, you know, who's like I remember the whole thing, like when Negan and his crew came in, and mm -hmm. the whole build up to the killing Glenn and all that stuff was it was just like probably the most engaged I've been in a TV show, like going into that, that duel or that battle for it them. Was, yeah, every time uh, my friend Josh Michael and I would get a script, we'd call it, she was like, hey, we're still alive? You're still alive? I'm still alive. <laughs> we're still alive. All right, good. You know, it was just gravy. He said, if we can get two episodes out of this, everything else is gravy. And so yeah. we, I ended up with like eight or nine, and he ended up with 10 or 11 or so, whatever. But we both died around the same time. But enough about The Walking Dead. Yeah, yeah, definitely this enough. This is not a Walking Dead show. It's not. <laughs> but it's, I think it's interesting because it's all in our backyard and you're from Atlanta. Sure, so the, sure. the success of it is is always interesting. So tell us about your acting school. 
Uh, well, it's a uh, it's not a school, so to speak, but I well, understand okay. what you're saying. Yeah. It, it's a uh, it's just me. Okay. Um, I uh, studied with a couple of different teachers over the years. Uh, one here in Atlanta named Sandra Dorsey. She's still with us. She's retired. And okay. a man named David LeGrant in Los Angeles who has moved on. And Sandra had studied with him in New York way back in the day. And um, I was trained in what's called the Strasbourg Method, or what a um, ignorant journalist would call method acting. Uh, there's no such thing as that, but it's not me living in a shoebox under a bridge for three weeks to get ready for a role. That's that's just crazy actor acting. Okay, there's nobody nobody trains people to do that. That's just Jared Leto losing his mind or whatever. Okay? <laughs> I got you. Jim Carrey being just Jim Carrey. That's not method acting. That's what they call it, but it's not what it is. Anyway, so that's what I teach. I teach the Strasberg method. Okay. And along with that, I teach. Uh, there's a new method that's just come into the Western Hemisphere called the Nikolai Demidoff method. I'm teaching that. And a little bit of Uta Hagen and a little bit of Michael Chekhov. And so the new one, what is that? The, what it, uh, well, this is an interesting story about when you ever heard of uh, Stanislavski? Yes. Okay, he's the father of modern acting techniques. Back in Russia, the Moscow Art Theater, way back in the 1800s, uh, early 1900s. And one of his students was a guy named Nikolai Demidov, who was also a psychologist back in the day. Oh, okay. And one of the people that Stanislavski thought really got what he was after back then. Mm -hmm. Anyhow, long story short, Nikolai became a teacher as well, wrote his own book called The Actor Creator. Wow. However, from what I've been able to glean, from what I've read, Russia was like, hey, we have only one father of theater, and that is Stanislavski. There will be no two fathers, and so wow. this book will stay here in Russia, and no one else needs to know about it. You can use it here, but we're not letting it out. Wow. So finally, in 2015, this, I should remember his name, but he teaches at Florida State, a gentleman from Russia, okay. translated the book into English, and now it is available. Now, if you want to buy one, it's $250. Or if you can find one at the library like I did, you can just borrow it. Um, <laughs> and so then I also took a course on it. Unfortunately, during the pandemic, it's online. And I've learned it's not real complicated, but it's it's a really new and unique way of approaching acting that meshes in really well with what the Strasbourg method that I teach. Mm -hmm. You've probably heard of the Meisner method, mm -hmm. which other people in town teach. It meshes in well and kind of in between the two of those. And uh, at the end of the day, all acting technique and training is about being real in imaginary circumstances, which is something that Sanford Meisner is quoted as saying, and I believe it to be true. Really all we're doing is acting teachers or coaches or whatever you want to call us is to help grown-ups be kids again. Mm. You know, that's the idea. Because when you're five or six, you're a perfect actor. Oh, I know. Because you I have a five year old. Right. Father, they they yeah. don't care who's watching yeah. and they'll do whatever the imaginary thing pops in their mind and that's they run wild with it. And that's so as an adult, you need to have that. You also need to show up on time, you know, pay your mortgage on time and hit your marks and not <laughs> yeah. hurt other people, you know, don't stab people, he's just fake. There's that part. So you can't just be a five year old, you've got to be an adult and right. a five year old. So that's really what all acting training is. That's an interesting take. That's all tra acting training is, is to help you as an adult basically put your civility away for a bit and, right. and, and let it let it rip. And, and and then also there's, you know, you got to learn your lines. You got to right. show up. You got to hit your marks. You know, you got to have that part, that technical side, and meshed all together. But they hire you for your creativity and your imagination and your ability to not give a damn who's watching. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's a, like, and I can only imagine. So coming from the stage, was that a being a theater actor first? Was that a difficult transition? Well, it, it can be. It's funny. I, What's funny is the opposite. I had done nothing but theater for years, and then I got into this whole film and TV thing pretty heavy for a while. And luckily, and so wonderfully for me, last year, uh, the theatrical outfit in Atlanta, a, a stalwart theater company that's been around for over 30 years in Atlanta, more than that, um, they decided to produce Our Town and The Laramie Project in repertory, which means we learn both plays and each night it's a different show with a cast of 10 people. Oh yeah, God. so we did two plays and you, you know, one night's Our Town, one night's Laramie, you know, not exactly like that, but that's the idea. Right. It's an old way of doing theater. You'd have a company that had knew a bunch of plays and every night is a different show. 
And I was fortunate enough to be cast in that show and spent six wonderful weeks rehearsing with these other nine wonderful actors and two directors and two stage managers and put this show on. But about halfway, you know, when I first got hired, I, I was talking to one of the directors, Clifton Gutterman, I said, and David Crow as well, I told him, I said, look, um, I've been hanging around microphones for quite a while now. I haven't been on the stage in a while, so you're probably going to have to tell me to speak up. I'm, I'm probably going to you project your voice. Yeah, yeah, which is part of theater. And they're like, "Oh, don't worry, Jason. I'm sure your, you know, your chops will come back. Don't worry." It's like, okay. <laughs> right, 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 right. Uh, I think it's about two weeks before opening. Dave is like, "Jason, can't hear you back here, buddy. A little louder, you know." <laughs> yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, it's like there it is. I knew it was coming because you know you get all you get used to the microphone, you know, being right here right. or right here, and you don't you can just talk like this and, and it picks it up. And it picks time. it up, and you can't do that on stage. You know, because we're not mic'd at all. It's just there's a thousand people in that room, and you got to make sure all of them can hear it. And yeah. and it has to be a little bit larger presentation than it would be on camera, because the camera is just a, a, an amazing lie detector. It sees right. through all your bullshit. Yeah. And that's what I'm helping people who've come from theater in or wanting to work in the film and is TV. Is that a lot of your your uh, students? Yeah, well, from? it's about half of them. About, about half of them. And then there's also, um, I get students who, like, I've always wanted to try acting, you know, and I get those folks, and I'll let a few in. Most of it, I, I don't let a lot of total greenhorns in, but I do from time to time if I see promise. I'm not always right, but <laughs> <laughs> I try. Um, and so it's, uh, you know, they, they study with me for hopefully a year or so, and they'll learn something. Um, I, I teach on what's called an ongoing style. There's no curriculum. You start, right. and then I just I teach you. It's, a, it's kind of steep learning in the beginning, and then you're just kind of practicing. So, and that's probably is that based on where that person is when they True. enter. Each like, person's different. Yeah. Got so it's like you you know and everybody starts at zero though. Even if you know Meryl Streep decided to take my class, she would start at zero because mm. we all have to kind of learn the basics and 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 work up from there. I mean, of course, she probably. That's all that, but you get my point. I, I you get, get my I point. Got the point. I got so yeah, and then we're all kind of at, you know we're all speaking the same language. It's like mm -hmm. becoming a PA and learning what's going on on the set. And right. Okay. Right. Now I know how all this works. Now I can do this job. That's the idea. And so uh, if they stick around for a while and they do their homework and they pay attention and they try hard, you know, and, and aren't lazy, they can learn some u very uh, useful acting techniques. Um, you don't always need acting techniques, but sometimes you do. Right. Yeah. So, like, when you went back and, and you, you were a part of that production and just being on set where it's like, okay, let's take that because there's no second take mm -hmm. in theater, new, right? So new, new. What's is the, what's that something you have to get back in the, the No, world? no. I mean, not for me. I mean, I, like I said, I have way more theater experience than I do film and TV gotcha. experience. But, no, I mean, you know, that's, yeah, there's... And I was never one of those kind of actors on set where it'd be like, oh, I fucked up, let me try that again, you know. And, and, and You can, though. That's what's nice about working on camera. And that's There's what a I, little bit of a... That, I learned, that's what, one of the greatest things I learned working on uh, Walking Dead was watching these guys like Lenny James. What an honor to get to work with that guy. I never got to work with uh, Andrew Lincoln. Uh, we met at lunch one day, but that's it. And Kari, as well, was wonderful to work with. You know, these more veteran than I am in that business. But Lenny is just amazing. And I, if you'd asked me, like, hey, you think you're going to ever have a scene with Lenny James? You know, I'm like, that'll never happen. And then I'm having, like, nothing but scenes with him. It's like, this is a... I, I, I just had to pinch myself. Yeah. But just, you know, he'd be in the middle of this great emotional thing, and then he'd just stop, turn, walk back, and go back and just start again. And they, you know, back to one. But yeah, on his own. And it's yeah. like, but that's what they expect, because they're going to edit it, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah and he yeah. just he knows how to leave the space for them to edit, and... That's what they want, and so I learned that too. Cause, so I can do that, you know. I can just right. pause. They know what you're up to, and the camera will reset, and they'll go back to their move, and everybody's happy. So do you take that those experiences and incorporate that into any of your classes? With I yeah, I tell them about that stuff, but mm -hmm. my class is an acting class. Right. There's no camera, and we only work with um, theater uh, work. And so hello, we're here. Um, <laughs> Pizza's here. Yeah. Um, we only work, you know, it's, it's, my class is Acting Fundamentals 101. Gotcha. How to emote on cue and be reliable when called upon to be creative and imaginative and emote. Yeah. That's what I teach. As far as the camera technique and all that stuff, I, we talk about it, but it's not something we practice. Gotcha. Yep. Now, for the, for the, 
for during COVID, is is it something that you have you went to online or are you still doing in person? Well, uh, uh, so mid March, you know, it's like, hey guys, let's take a week off and see what happens. And of course, never we never saw it. Yeah. yeah. Six so, months, nine months later. So I, you know, I was keeping it. I tried doing the online thing, and it, for my class, it just didn't work. It's just, it's, it was too remote. It just, I couldn't see what was going on in their faces. You know, it's just, yeah. I was, and I felt like I was ripping people off. I wasn't even charging them. I was just like, let's just meet up once a week and play. And then I thought, okay, I can, I can start charging them again. And I did it once. And I was like, I'm, I'm ripping people off. This is not, not what they paid for. So I right. stopped. I just kept in touch, and then about July, when things had calmed down a bit, I said, all right, who's interested in meeting very carefully? Mm -hmm. So instead of having 10 to 12 people in class, I limited to six. Mm. I, my, I moved to a new studio, which has uh, a 1,000 square feet of empty space. I can bring six people in myself, and we sit socially distanced, and we don't do any scene work. That's gotcha. the problem. It's all But it's better than looking at someone on a computer screen. Much better. So <laughs> yeah. it's monologues and solo work. Now, what I have done since people have gotten it and recovered and or gotten inoculated, I've been keeping what I call the, you know, the safe list. Mm -hmm. And these people are willing to work together. I'm like, look, if you and Bob and Sue, you guys want to work together and do a scene and spit all over each other and all that, and you're happy with that? And you're okay? And, and you're okay? Then knock yourselves out. Here's the scene, go home and work on it. And when we watch it, we'll all sit over here and you'll sit over, you'll do your scene over there. And that's their business, they're adults. They can yeah. make their own decisions. Right. Um, so that's how I handle that. And we're, but it's interesting, my classes, are more popular now than they were in July. I've got six new students starting now. I've got four more I'm interviewing later this month. So and you more people you, want to come you just to class. Don't get in for the price of entry. You have to be interviewed. Oh yeah, I don't just let anybody in. Yeah, um, I mean I let most people in, but you know, the interview process is there for a purpose. But yeah. yeah, so I mean right now I'm having a little bit of an issue. I've got more people that want to be in the class than I have room for. And doing six at a time, it means I have to teach. It costs. It takes more of my time because right. I can't do as opposed more. to doing your ten. Right. So it's an interesting. Even though we're like at the worst part of the pandemic ever, all these people are wanting to sign and up. People are just ready to get out. Yeah. And just do yeah. something. And so I'm. It is my space. No one else is in there. It's got a UV filtration system uh, with lights, and mm -hmm. it's got the filters, and the, AV, it run, the, the fan whole, runs the whole. I mean, I've done everything except you know. You're it almost down the for CDC, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm trying. <laughs> you know, so and and I would say that again, my students. I was worried, but everyone has just been so cool about it. Hey, I was my roommate was near a guy that was exposed to a dude last week. I'm not coming to class. Okay, so I just I let him not come. You know, I yeah. don't. Um, I don't force them to come to class. If we you don't want to take the risk. They, well, I, I don't or, want anybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, yeah I don't yeah, want yeah. anyone taking the risk. Right. So everyone's been super cool about it. That's and awesome. I'm, I'm, I'm very, I shouldn't say pleasantly surprised. Like that sounds like I was expecting them to cheat, but no. I, I, <laughs> but I was worried that a few people might be like, "Ah, eh, this is bullshit. It's a hoax." And right, like, right, you know, right. And I think everybody understands now. No, that's not the case. Has work been picking up acting wise? Yes, I mean it's not that I'm. When I say when, when we say work is picking up, auditions are picking up. Okay. Now that after that, it's on me. <laughs> right. I right. actually had more auditions in the month of January than I've had in the last two years, almost. Uh, well, no, you have to remember there was seven months. When yeah. So there, everyone's trying to make up for lost time. Yep. It's like a tidal wave. Now another thing too, you know, and you can understand this: middle-aged-ish white guys were not very popular for quite some time. And so we weren't, I wasn't auditioning as much as I used to, mm -hmm. which is fine. We had a good run, you know, I have no mm -hmm. complaints. It's fair. But suddenly, I mean, I'm just, I'm auditioning for commercials. I don't, look at me, I don't audition for commercials. <laughs> you know, I'm Can I, you share any of the commercials you recently auditioned for? I auditioned for like a, a couple of phone commercials, uh, one, I can't even remember, there's so many of them. Um, yeah. It's like five, five different commercials. One. There's a lottery commercial in there. They're all comedy stuff. Right. You know, I'm not the hell. Oh, this is the you know, I'm not yeah. that guy. Not sexual seduction. No, right? that's that's for Gary Weeks to handle. <laughs> Hi, Gary. That's for Gary to handle. Uh, Rob Peralgo and the, the the chiseled guys. That's their right, job. Right, you know, right. I, I I play the rapists and murderers and <laughs> racists and and funny guys in commercials. That's that's my. Do you job. feel like? Th does that bother you? No. No. It's a gift. It's the thing. It's my thing. Yeah. Um. 
Um, I'm going to plug somebody else's course here, but uh, uh, Matthew Cornwell and his wife Brooke Taylor. They but he run, learned everything from you, right? You can plug. No, 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 no. <laughs> no they they are, they're running the Sam Christensen course about okay. how to figure out who you are as a person. And I, I was I was fortunate enough to take it from Sam before he passed, and it was a life changing experience for me because it allowed me to see how people see me. Mm. And when I heard how they saw me, I was like, well, that's who I thought I was, and I was trying to be something I wasn't. Wow. I was trying to live into like what my parents wanted me to be or somebody else wanted mm -hmm, me to be, mm -hmm. and I wasn't living my true self. And and um, and it helped not only with my acting career, but just with life. Mm. And um, so that's a great course if you can ever take it with Matt and Brooke. I forgot what they call it now. Sorry, guys. Um, but um, that's, uh, that's important to know as an actor is what you are. When you walk in the room, people start. We're judging. We're right. judging animals. We we yep. start judging people the minute we see them. Mm -hmm. You know that people go see tats. They see bald. They make judgments. Oh yeah, for sure. Doesn't what mean they're right, right, but they. Yeah. But when you are in the, in the acting business, if what they judge and what you present don't line up, they start distrusting you, even mm. though there's no reason to. It's just this weird thing that happens to people. So part of being an actor is to kind of. Not say that I need to be something I'm not. I need to be what I am. And mm. I need to embrace it fully and be that as best as I can be. And what I have learned is that, you know, those are the kind of roles that I enjoy playing. Mm -hmm. And I'm really good at. Like the Rectify role. Mm -hmm. you, uh, you, have you Have you ever watched that show? I've seen parts of it. Okay. I play a very awful person in that show. I mean, I'm on death row for a reason, okay? I'm got, yeah. supposed to be there. It wasn't a mistake. No, I'm supposed to be there. And he's, no DNA evidence. There, you know, yeah. I'm like, yeah, I'd do it again. You know, let me out. Yeah. Let me at him. You know, it's that kind of guy. And I wasn't auditioning for that role. I was auditioning for, like, cops and things like that on that show. The complete opposite. Right. And, I, and uh, my agency at the time was like, well, we don't see you that way. And the casting doesn't see you in those kinds of roles. I said, well, I see me in those. And this is before I took the Sam Christensen course. I, I see myself in that kind of a role. Please let me audition for this role. Mm -hmm. Fine, fine. And I, by four days later, I had the role. You know, because nobody saw me that way. And wow, so that was kind of that was a, that was one little you know crack in the wall of like eh, this is this is this is the I'm, I'm trying to be something I I suck at mm -hmm. because it's sexy or cool. But right. it's, this is what I'm easy. This is easier. I'm good at this. So that's what I do. Do you have? Out of, do you have a favorite character that you've played out of all the the different <coughs> shows, movies, shorts, all the stuff you've done? Is there a character that favorite. that that really just was hmm. whether it was uh, you enjoyed it because it was a challenge or it was just something that you you really really? Well, actually, I'm I'm working on a project right now that I can't tell you anything okay. about. But Fair enough. It, and it's not some big fancy Marvel something. It's it's actually something some other friends of mine and I are talking about doing. And I'm getting to play a character that I've completely created myself from the ground up, and I'm really enjoying the hell out of it. And he's is that the first time you've done that? Were this you particular from a, a character. Well, to, to be able to come in, I mean, they had a script, mm -hmm. and then I read, and then the script has been rewritten multiple times and mm -hmm. turned into a whole new story. And so when I came into the first reading, I threw this character, and they're like, "Oh shit, snap! Yeah, yeah, yeah!" And then they just, when they rewrote the script, it's mm. like they wrote it around that way of my choices and that's been fun and I'm about to do something I can talk about I just um, agreed yesterday with a guy named Man Robinson um, I know that name yeah it's, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting here racking my brain <coughs> I, I, I mean, just this, see he's I've seen him he's recently. making a movie called uh, Sebastian Sebastiano or something that's the name of it okay I'm sorry man um, and the name of his company is uh, it's MW um, I can see the logo but I, like I said I just got involved Yesterday, yesterday, um, and I'm gonna. It's just a small role in this feature film he's making, and he does want us talking about it. Um, <laughs> there you go. Well, yeah. Let's talk about it. We'll put it and, all at the and bottom. And so, of the there were two roles he wanted me to look at. One was like a, a police type guy, and one was a, a coroner type guy. And I, I, I like the coroner part better. And I had some ideas around. Hey man, when did, no, that's his name's man. But hey man, it's, it's my, my 70s. <laughs> you can't mess up my seventies right? days. You know. I'm yeah. a, um, wouldn't it be cool if the character was more like this? He was kind of like, you know, I'm not going to talk about it, but right, it's like right, this, right. this, this, and this, and this. And he's like, oh, yeah, let's do that. And I said, well, we'll have to, he goes, you rewrite the lines, we'll figure it out, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so that's what I, that's, that's fun. 
That's, being able to have that creative freedom. That's the, yeah, that's what I've been hoping for. And Because, like, on The Walking Dead, no offense to those people. They're awesome people, and I, and I love the experience, but you couldn't change anything. It is. You do what you we do. Were. I mean, you left out the and in this sentence. You know, it's like that strict. Wow. And if you want to change something, there's like a committee meeting that has to happen, so you well, just don't do it. Yeah. And, and that's fine. It's like an act of Congress. Hey, that's their world, yeah. and they have created an amazing, amazing right. story. And so... You know, I didn't fight it with them. I was like, right. "Oh, okay, this okay, I understand." So I learned my lines as they were written, and made made it work. Right. As opposed to going, "Hey, could we?" No, no, just make it work, man. Was there anybody that tried that? Mm, not on. No, not <laughs> that I, I. Not any stories that I can tell. No, not that I. I mean, I learned about it because people said, "Yeah, I tried that and it didn't work." <laughs> so just save your breath. So I was like, "Okay, got it." Um, but favorite character, yeah, that, and you know, I'm you're you're stumping me here. I should have prepared for this. <laughs> you're good. I liked it. It, it. it was actually just from our conversation. It wasn't something I had planned no, on asking. That's it, okay. it was something way. It was like you know, you've played a lot of different characters, well, but they all kind of fall with, in you know that like that realm. So like, was there one that you well, like more than the, the other? greatest experience I've ever had working in front of a camera to date? And nothing against the dead or rectify was working on a, a movie called American Made with Tom Cruise that we oh. shot in the summer of 2018, 17. I forgot when it was. Now I just forgot the name. There was a. There's actually a film. We got to fly planes and go to South America and all kinds of fun stuff. It was just oh, it was seven and a half weeks of heaven. Where where can if people interested in your acting. Uh, Act, not school, but classes. My school, my classes. Yeah. Where I, where can where can one find the information on stuff you have? Very about? simple. Um, it's on this thing called the internet. You might have heard of this. I've seen that around. Yeah. If you put in www.jasonsmith.com, and that's J-A-Y-S-O-N Smith.com slash teacher, and everything's right there. Right there. there. Super yep. simple. Super simple. I also have a Facebook site. It's called Acting for Camera and Stage with Jason Warner Smith. It's way too long of a title. It's, it's the on, longest title it's ever. It's on Facebook. Um, and But that's what my class is. It's Acting for Camera and Stage. And, gotcha. And it's not tips and tricks on how to work with a camera, how to book more, what's your audition technique. It's not that. It's just acting. And it's on Facebook and it's on and uh, just the, the web. So all the announcements that you couldn't make because certain things are in the works, are people able to go to that same website minus the teacher piece ah. and see uh, anything you have coming up and once you're able to make announcements about certain stuff? The, I would have to admit that website is one that I handle, so it's not updated very much. <laughs> it's it's, it's kind of old school website, you know? Gotcha. It's on uh, WordPress kind of thing. Gotcha. So on, you, know, you didn't have to tell anybody. Nah, that's ah. all right. Yeah. It is what it is. But um, uh, uh, on Facebook... I That's have, there, there is a page that actually, I don't run it, but somebody, uh, a fan runs it. It's called Jason Warner Smith mm -hmm. Fan Page gotcha. on Facebook. They tend to have everything that's coming up. Um, now, do you give them the stuff directly? I will. Yeah, I, I, I can say, hey, here's some stuff you might want gotcha. to check out. And, and But they, they manage the site. And every now and then I'll, I'll make a comment. And when I make a comment, I put my initials after it. Gotcha. But it's, you know, that's where all things Jason Warner Smith are happening is on gotcha. the Facebook page. For so they should follow you there if they want the most current. Yeah. Up. Yeah, that would be the place to follow if you really got nothing else to do and want to keep up with my <laughs> acting career. Career, that's and, and watch the extended long version of the interview <laughs> <laughs> with outtakes and unedited, unexpurgated. Yes, that would be the place. Yep. Well, I definitely appreciate you taking this time and sitting down and talking with us and sharing with our like this is all for the Atlanta film production people here in the city, which you know we're just trying to figure out how to navigate through a new world yes. and get back into production. So. I, I know I definitely appreciate you taking your time, and I know everybody that watches the full interview will appreciate it as well. <laughs> if you're still awake, thanks for watching. <laughs> Michael, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. Uh, and thank you, everybody, for tuning in, and make sure to uh, follow and like this post and share it with people so they can find out about Jason and all his wonderful things he has going on and his classes. <laughs> all, right. all right, guys, till later. Ciao.